As AI becomes increasingly popular, developers need to wake up and actually start utilizing the tools that are available to you to help you boost your productivity at work and also offset some of the manual work that you typically do using these AI tools. Hi, my name is Gift Egwenu and in this channel I talk about tech, career and lifestyle. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing five of the best AI tools that are available for developers to use today. Now, it's controversial because some people believe that AI is going to take over your jobs as developers, but personally, I don't think so. I feel like AI is here to actually help you be more productive as a developer. Depending on how you see it, you can either see it from the perspective of this is going to help me do my best work, it's going to help me offset some of the manual work that I do for my day to day, or you see it from the perspective of this is going to take over my job. I'd rather stick with the former rather than the later. But anyway, the aim of this video is to share with you some tools that I've personally used and tried that will help make you more productive as a developer. Let's begin with tool number one. Of course, this has to be ChatGPT. If you're not familiar with ChatGPT, where have you been? ChatGPT is an AI assistant that would help you do so many different things. But for this video, I'm going to talk to you through use cases as a developer. So we all know ChatGPT. ChatGPT is created by the folks at OpenAI and it allows you to, you know, ask questions, get insights on several different topics really like i said i'm going to stick to just the context of a developer now as a developer how can you use chat gpt for your day-to-day -day? there's a bit of controversy around this but i'll just talk about how i use it and also share what i think about tools like this towards the end of the video now chat gpt is an excellent tool to allow you you know find information on the in the internet as developers will find that most of our time we spend googling stuff most of our time we spend doing research most of our time we spend it on stack overflow now with a tool like chat gpt you can quickly get answers to your questions or quickly debug your code without having to go through so many tabs or go through so many Google searches or go through so many Stack Overflow, you know, questions or answers on the internet. Personally, as a developer, every time that I need to figure out a bug or I'm trying to solve a problem, but I'm not sure the exact approach to go with, I find that I'm always going back to ChatGPT to help me do this. So think of ChatGPT as your intern or your assistant, where you can, you know, get a lot of value from asking you questions, helping, asking you to help you brainstorm your ideas, asking you to help you resolve your code if there are any issues in your code, right? And I've seen a lot of people utilize it in that way as well. Now, the other part where I find that a lot of people are very skeptical about ChatGPT is when people use it to copy and paste without actually reviewing what they are copying, right? A lot of times these tools are not essentially 100% right. So if you're going with ChatGPT's responses, you should make sure that you clarify exactly what you expect from it and also review what it gives you. So if you so if it gives you a response back, don't just copy and paste that. Sometimes you copy and paste code from ChatGPT and you find that the code doesn't even work. So make sure that you're spending some time, you know, to go through the code and analyze it and make sure that it works. Also just making sure that you're not plagiarizing copy and pasting without understanding what you're copying and pasting, right? It defeats the purpose entirely. You should use these tools to help you elevate your work, to remove the parts where you have to do the research, right? But don't just rely on it 100%. Make sure that you're doing your due diligence before you use things that you copy over from ChatGPT. That's my two cents on that topic. Moving on to tool number two, GitHub Copilot. Now, I've talked about this tool previously on this channel when it was first released. And when I used it for the first time, honestly, I was very, very impressed. GitHub Copilot is your AI pair programmer that has been trained on billion lines of code to help you, you know, use natural language to suggest code to you. So how it typically works is it works inside of your code editor. So if you use either VS Code, Vim, 
or um, Coda. There are so many editors that is compatible with GitHub Copilot, right? If you use any of those editors, you need to install the extension and it just works. Like if you're trying to write any code, you find that it suggests the rest of the code for you. One particular instance where I find it very helpful is when I'm trying to use a new library where I'm not familiar with the syntax is or how to, you know, bootstrap or initialize something in the library. You'll find that just by installing it, GitHub Copilot will suggest how to get started with the library, like the initial code block that you need to start. Right. And I've seen this a lot with different tools and, you know, libraries that I use on a day to day basis. Another important thing that I'd like to share that GitHub Copilot does for you is that you can actually write out what you'd like it to suggest to you using comments. So if you put a comment and you say, oh, I have this array, can you give me the last item in the array? Immediately you finish writing that you get a suggestion on how it works in the current language that you're writing, whether it's JavaScript or Rust or Python, right? I find that that is very interesting. Personally, for me, this is very useful because there are some syntax that you don't remember. There are some things that you know how to do, but you need to refer back to the documentation to, you know, get the code block. You know, with tools like this, it helps you remove that extra step by already suggesting what you need. Of course, I would always recommend that you test out whatever suggestions you get and make sure that it is correct and it works right before you ship your code, right? That's the only suggestion that I'll give you. Tool number three is called Amazon Code Whisperer. Now I've only tried this once, but I'm also very happy to share alternatives, right? So Amazon Code Whisperer also works very similar to GitHub Copilot in that it helps you suggest code inside of your code editor, right? This tool is actually very amazing because it uses, you know, natural language as well to give you insights into the kind of code that you're writing. Amazon Code Whisperer can suggest snippets of code to you as you step through your code base, or you can also use comments similar to how you do that with um, GitHub Copilot. So it's a very useful tool. If you're looking for alternatives to GitHub Copilot, I'll definitely recommend this one. Next up, we have a tool called Kodi from the folks at SourceGraph. Now I've made a video about SourceGraph before on this channel. You should check it out if you'd like to learn more about SourceGraph. But Kodi is an AI tool that helps you answer code questions and also help you write code based on your code base. This tool is absolutely free for you to use and you can start using it by just getting yourself a source graph account, downloading the Kodi app and also installing the extension in your favorite code editor. The amazing thing about this tool is the things that it actually helps you do. Apart from helping you answer questions about your code base that is often required, if you're a new developer onboarding into a code base, there are parts of it that you don't understand. A tool like this will actually help you walk you through the code and essentially what the code is doing, right? Apart from that, Kodi is also a tool that would help you detect where there are bugs and errors in your code. It will help you debug the code, help you, you know, understand what the problem is by giving you, you know, insights into what is wrong in your code base. It could also do things like help you summarize the most recent commits that has been made in the code base, help you understand what that change was and, you know, what it does in the code base. There's just so many things you could do with this tool to help you, you know, be more productive with the code that you're writing or the code base that you're working in, right? So if you've never tried it before, I'll recommend that you check it out and see if it's a tool that you can use in your daily workflow to help you be more productive. Finally, we have the last tool and it's called Grits. Grits is your technical depth manager. Essentially what this tool does is it helps you with dependency upgrades and migrations, right? There are so many teams today that would like to upgrade their code base from JavaScript to TypeScript, or they would like to upgrade their code base from using 
React um, class-based components to using hooks. There are so many different um, migrations that might be needed in your team and doing that, especially on a very large code base, could become very tedious and time consuming. But with a tool like Grid, it can automate that process for you, help you update your code, as well as create a pull request for you to review before you merge it into your code base. So yeah, if you're looking to do migrations or if you're looking to automatically update dependencies in your code base, this is a tool that you should definitely look into. I'll definitely recommend it for you. And there you have it. Those are the five AI tools that I use as a developer to help me stay more productive and, you know, offset some of the work that I will do manually. Now, if you use other tools that I did not mention in these videos and they've been very helpful in your workflow and your process, I would like you to do one thing. I'd like you to leave a comment and tell me what tool that is because I'm very curious what other people are using. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and let your friends know about the video by sharing it with them as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.